Hi guys, it's Jonathan here with something I've actually teased recently over on the GameSpot channel. Um, and depending on the camera angle, all you will have seen of that was the fact that this thing is four barrels. Or has four barrels, I should say. Is four barreled. And kind of looks a bit like a very small bore shotgun. But isn't. I'll tell you right away. This is a rifle. This is a four barreled Lancaster rifle. Those of you who know a bit about, well, either the Lancaster rifle made famous for having an oval bore, that is, that applies here. It's that Lancaster, Charles Lancaster, or rather the barrels are his legacy, as it were. The rifle is by uh, his successor, Henry Thorne. Um, at the end of the video, you can jump back and watch our video on the Lancaster pistol, two barrel Lancaster pistol. There was also a four barrel pistol and this is kind of um, part of the same family. So we've got the oval ball introduced by Charles Lancaster uh, back in the 1860s, which is a way to do rifling without cutting grooves into the ball, essentially. Um, it's a, it's a tiny, um, tiny amount of ovalness, <laughs> as it were. If you look down the barrels, in fact, let's try that. Let's just see if we can see, see if you can detect. You may not be able to. Um, it is almost undetectable, but each bore is slightly out of round by something like 0 0.0006 of an inch or something ridiculous like that. Don't quote me on that. And so there's, it's still describing a rotation within the barrel, as it were, like a, like a rifling groove or grooves, but it's doing it using the oval shape of the bore. So this has that going for it, and that is interesting in itself. The fact that there are four barrels is also incredibly interesting. Uh, four barrels, uh, shotguns and rifles are, are pretty uncommon, and I think we can see why this is pretty hefty and is not exactly quick into the aim. Um, my left arm is already tired. <laughs> those of you who go to the gym will probably manage better than me. So those two aspects, um, as I say, pretty fascinating. Uh, you can tell it's a rifle from the sighting system as well. If you look down the bore and thought that's smooth, it's, it's, it's a 20 bore shotgun. This is 20 bore, by the way, uh, 20 gauge. Um, you'd still think, hang on, this is this is either for slug shooting or it's actually some sort of rifle because it has. The blade, or sort of barley corn front sight there. And at the back we have express style rifle sights. So I'll spin this around. Hopefully get a better look. So a V-shaped notch on the standing sight. And then we have folding leaves all the way up. To 400 yards. So this style of sight is pretty standard for uh, this sort of sporting rifle and it is a sporting rifle. So this is not a military thing by any stretch of the imagination. So you're getting the picture by now I hope. This is a, a big game rifle. Um, 20 bore but 577 cartridge case. So, uh, similar to the Martini Henry cartridge case um, kind of necked out to equivalent to 20 gauge, but a, a big round nose, solid bullet. You can fire shot from the Lancaster oval bore. That's one of its advantages. And in fact, the patent for this, which is 1882 uh, from Henry Thorne, actually specifies that the system I'm going to explain to you, that's the real icing on the cake here, and explains the crazy looking under lever. It's like, why does it need a lever if it's a top break? Well, we're coming to that. Um, the patent actually explains that you can use one set of breeches for a pair of rifle barrels and the other set of breeches to fire shotgun barrels. So you could have a quad barrel gun, two barrels rifled, two barrels smooth. Although, given that he's already using Lancaster's patent oval, oval bore rifling, you could actually just use four rifle barrels and fire shot out of two of them, or out of all of them, up to you. So that there are options here. Uh, while I'm at it, we have also got the bite 
um, as it's known, on the top here, this, this lug here that locks into the body. And a pre fairly typical shotgun style extractor system. And I will just pop off the forend here. There we go. This is pretty standard sporting gun stuff. We've, we've seen it before. Um, every little detail on this is actually quite nicely subtly decorated. We've got a sort of almost a punch dot decoration around the perimeter of this finial here, for example. Uh, and that style of decoration is actually all over the gun. Hopefully we'll pick that up as we go. Uh, that lets us hook off the set of barrels, which are, honestly, if you run out of ammunition, you could literally just club someone to death with this. This is absolutely immense. A huge am amount of iron. Uh, they are Damascus. Damascus in the firearm sense, not in the true Damascus edge weapon sense. So a spiral twist, forged welded together. Now, over time, that wears. So these were browned. And this, this Damascus finish, it, it's actually more than just twist. Twist would be literally just coiled together. This is spiraled and then welded together and then twist. It's, it's an astonishingly uh, nice bit of metalwork um, that you'll find on high-end sporting guns. And if we flip it over, you should hopefully be able to see something of what it looked like when it was newer. <laughs> this has been handled a lot. And you could put an etch on this and rebrown it, and it would look amazing. Um, we're not going to do that because we're a museum. Um, we preserve, uh, conserve rather than restore as a rule. But you can see, hopefully, the browning and a bit more of that beautiful Damascus pattern on this patch here that's been protected the whole time, nearly the whole time, by the forend. So a little bit of archaeology on the gun there. We've got proof marks, standard London proof marks. Um, interestingly, they're marked 20 on the underside and 21 between the proof marks uh, being the bore. And they have serial numbers, or, or the serial number, 5597. So I believe this is a continuous serial number applied to the whole... Lancaster range under Henry Thorne. It's still, all these guns were still being branded Lancaster because the name had tremendous recognition and it, it applied to the oval bore system. So Thorne wasn't going to start calling the company Thorne, um, like Elon Musk with Twitter or something. Um, he's going to keep that recognizable uh, brand name. Uh, and he did. And there's another marking here that's going to become very relevant as I just finish up our story later with um, the rather nice personal story, the provenance that's attached to this particular gun, but I want to show, you, show the uh, marking to you now. Those of, some, some of you might recognise this if you, if, you, um, if you know Indian history or British colonial history. Uh, this might mean something to you. If not, I'll explain that in a moment. Now that brings me to the back end of the gun. So we have the action body, more, well, view marks actually rather than proof marks. The same serials, thankfully. Um, not really that exciting. Uh, we have the brand name, essentially, or the patent designation, Charles Lancaster's patent, London. So there's nothing of, of Henry Thorne on this at all, but he's the mastermind behind this system. Um, Henry Thorne was the, uh, an apprentice of, uh, of um, Lancaster's who bought out the company after Lancaster died. Now, we've got... Oh, sorry, before I just get to the, to, to the mechanism, there's some of that decoration I was talking to you about. Very sort of understated, um, vaguely floral around these um, screw heads here. Something you'll see a lot on vintage firearms is they'll not sort of disguise screws and pins, but, but they'll sort of try and blend them in by decorating them. And this is no exception So that that line of sort of ring and dot decoration is bordering basically all the metal parts on this gun. A really dark bit of wood here that I've actually yet to identify. I'll see if I can do that before we go uh, live. With a cheek rest, uh, a little silver plate on the bottom there, and a very big rubber 
recoil butt pad here for what I think are obvious reasons. It's a relatively big bore rifle to begin with, and if you happen to fire two of your shots in quick succession, or, well, yeah, two in quick succession, I'll explain why I hesitated there in a moment, um, you're gonna want that recoil mitigation. Hello, future Jonathan here. Now, I'm going to have to intervene and shut up past Jonathan for a moment because what he's about to tell you is incorrect. So we'll be erasing it from history with this. Um, so when we first acquired this, there was an uh, auction catalog description and that was actually incorrect. So the way they described it, it was firing. So we have these four firing pins, these four chambers, these four barrels. It described it as firing um, top set, bottom set. So one, fire one, fire two, Recock, fire three, fire four. Sorry, fire three, fire four. So one, two, three, four. That, as it turns out, long story short, is incorrect. Um, <laughs> what it kind of happily actually appears to be is just a variation on Thorne's classic revolving striker system. Just like that Lancaster pistol video that. that we did that you can go back and watch, um, which shows you the patent drawing that applies to that. That loosely applies to this. Unfortunately, I can't give you the details of um, how this lever interacts with the version that's in this, because I dare not take, try and take these screws out. I have tried to take these screws out. They do not budge. I will not apply excess force and damage it, and I cannot get this x-rayed anytime soon. If I can, I will... Um, ask the guys to put up the image on social media uh, and, uh, and add the details to this video. Uh, so the way it actually works is a bit more logical if, you, if you've watched uh, the Lancaster Pistol video or if you know about the Lancaster Pistols and how they work or you've watched Forgotten Weapons video on the other variation of this without the lever and that is simply, he says, you cock it, you pull the, the front trigger and that fires the top right firing pin. So far, so identical. You then pull the rear trigger and it fires the bottom left. So top right, bottom left, diagonally opposed. Then you recycle it with the lever and that sets the mechanism up to fire bottom right, top left. So it's fire one, fire two, fire three, fire four. And the only way that makes any sense is if you have a revolving plate with strikers on it. I think the firing pins are, are free floating, but there are strikers behind them. Again, I don't have uh, x-ray vision, so I can't say, but it's some, it's, it's doing, it's going, like if you, you could have it fire them at the same time. So bam, bam, two and two, but actually what it's doing is <laughs> bang, bang, bang bang. So it's clearly a rotation of a, of a striker system. Um, I wish I could be uh, clearer for you. I can't, uh, but I really wanted to correct that because um, we like to get things right here. So back to past Jonathan. So a an historic firearm, of course, with multiple technical features of interest. That would be enough, more than enough for us to have purchased it, as we did. Um, but it also has this personal connection. So let me just show you that again. This is in gold, by the way, as is, as is the sight line on the rear sights, which I failed to, to mention. But otherwise, it's not, it's not exactly over the top. But the name is in gold. And that's because this was made in 1885 by Lancaster for, as it says on the barrel, His Highness, that's, it, that's the HH part, it's not part of his name, uh, Maharana Sri Wakat Singhji, my apologies <laughs> for my terrible pronunciation there, and uh, Lunavada is the date that he was in charge of, uh, under the um, British colonial uh, control uh, directly from 1886 and um, under British influence from quite early in the, in the century. And a lot of the uh, Indian princes and um, local rulers like this had uh, sort of regional state rulers had a real fascination for firearms technology and for European and specifically British um, guns and rifles, and we see we see this quite frequently. 
uh, including things made in India to you know, the highest standards in European style, um, either British or French. So this is part of that tradition and a part of Indian and British colonial history. I couldn't really ask for better from a museum firearm. 